everybody. It is Tuesday, April 14th, and we're going to review the letters F and G. And I have another classic story to tell you. This one's even older, though. Grab my book. Yeah? Chi Chi wanted to say good morning to you guys. Did you hear her? This is called The Princess and the Pea by Hans Christian Andersen. This one I know your grandparents also heard on top of your mom and dad. Okay, here we go. A long time ago, in a land far away, there lived a king and queen who had just one son. The prince was grown up and it was time for him to marry a princess. And she must be a real princess, the prince told the king and queen. But there were no princesses in the land where he lived. So the king and queen arranged for the prince to travel to strange and distant lands to find a bride. The prince traveled north through frozen lands until he came to a castle where a princess lived. Kind of like Frozen, doesn't it? The princess was tall and fair with skin as soft as a peach. But when she laughed, she sounded like a braying donkey. Not only am I exquisitely beautiful, she told the prince, but I can name every capital city of every country in the world and I can speak 24 languages. You will never meet anyone as smart as me. A real princess would never be so boastful, thought the prince. I can't marry her. Ma'am, you're interrupting story time. So the prince traveled through hot, sandy deserts until he came to a palace where a princess lived. The princess had long, gleaming hair the color of midnight and skin that smelled like sweet almonds. But though she was very beautiful, the princess would not speak to the prince. She wouldn't even smile at him. She held her pretty nose high in the air. A real princess would never be so proud, thought the prince. I can't marry her. And so the disappointed prince traveled east through misty lands and over windswept mountains until he came to a mansion where a princess lived. This princess was small and neat with rippling red hair. She had a charming smile and a lovely voice, but she told the most shocking lies. Last night I ate a whole elephant for dinner, she said, and it was as big as this room. Really, said the prince, how amazing. A real princess would never tell such shocking lies, thought the prince. I can't marry her. A year had passed when the prince returned home from his travels, weary, sad, and lonely. I'll just have to remain a bachelor, he told the king and queen. Well, one evening, well, not long after the prince had come home, a terrible storm blew in from the west. Outside the window, lightning flashed and thunder rumbled, and huge raindrops fell from the sky. Inside the palace, the prince sat with the king and queen by the fireside, listening to the storm. Suddenly, there was a knock at the castle door. The king was so surprised that he went to answer it himself. There, standing in the window doorway, was the most bedraggled young woman the king had ever seen. Water ran down her hair and face, and her clothes were sopping wet and muddy. Water ran in through the toes of her shoes and again through the heels. Good evening, your majesty, she said to the king, curtsying politely. I am a princess, and I need shelter for the night. May I please come in? The king could hardly believe that this soggy, sorry-looking creature was a princess, but he invited her in anyway. Of course, he said, please come in out of the night storm and we'll gladly give you shelter for the night. When the king told the prince that a princess had turned up at the door, the prince was very eager to meet her, but the queen told him he would have to wait. The princess said that she couldn't possibly meet you wet and bedraggled, the queen explained. She has gone to have a bath and change into some dry clothes. That's a good sign, said the prince, but how can we be certain that she is a real princess? I have an idea, said his mother. Just leave everything to me. Off went the queen to the kitchen. She asked the cook for a single, tiny, dried green pea. A short while later, the princess arrived in the main hall dressed in the queen's clothes. Her hair shone, her cheeks were rosy, and her eyes sparkled merrily to match her smile. She certainly looked like a real princess. 
The prince and princess sat beside the fire and talked for hours. The princess was smart, charming, and seemed honest. The prince was enchanted, but he still wasn't sure that she was a real princess. No, you may not turn the pages for me. Meanwhile, the queen went to the best guest room carrying a single tiny dried green pea. In the bedroom, she put the pea under the bed mattress. Then she asked the servant to bring another mattress to put on top of the first, and then another mattress, and another, and another. At last, there were 20 mattresses on the bed. But even that wasn't enough. The queen told the servant to put 20 cozy, soft quilts on top of the 20 mattresses. Then she had a ladder brought for the princess. As soon as the queen was satisfied that the bed was ready, she showed the sleepy princess to her room. The princess was surprised when the queen brought her to a bedroom with its towering bed and tall ladder, but she didn't protest or complain. She thanked the queen and wished her good night. The princess climbed the ladder to the very top pile of the mattresses and quilts. Sighing contentedly, she settled down to sleep. But the princess did not sleep a wink. She tossed and turned all night. By morning, the princess felt tired and weary. And when she came down to breakfast, the prince, the king, and the queen greeted her eager eagerly. Did you sleep well? asked the queen. Oh, I'm afraid not, sighed the princess. There was something small and hard in the bed, and no matter which way I tossed and turned, I still felt it. I'm dreadfully tired, for I haven't slept at all. I'm so sorry, said the queen, but I'm delighted too. Pro this proves that you are indeed a real princess. Only a real princess would feel a tiny pea under 20 mattresses and 20 quilts. Maybe I should have let you two turn the pages. The prince was overjoyed, for he had finally, or he had already fallen in love with the princess, and she had fallen in love with him. And so they were married. They had a splendid wedding, and they invited all the royal families of all the kingdoms the prince had visited. And what happened to the pea? It was put on a velvet cushion in a glass case and sent to the museum, where it's still on display to this very day. The end. That's kind of a silly story, but it's fun. So sometimes books don't have to tell you really lessons or anything. You can just read them because they're fun and it's good to read and it's enjoyable to read. And I hope you enjoyed this book and I'll see you again soon. Bye.